I like that trailer, obviously, but I think it makes it look easy. It makes me look like I was invincible and that whole thing was a sure bet. But here's the story that trailer doesn't tell. I had two major freakout moments during that run. The first was at mile six on day one, when my little sister left my side, said goodbye, drove to the airport, and flew home. I was suddenly alone with my quest, and I was terrified at what uncertainties lie ahead. As I settled into a routine on the road, I began listening to podcasts, TED Talks, NPR, because sometimes I just need to hear somebody talking. As I listened to all these people speaking about the human spirit, relationships, success, and failure, and especially about why some people can fail so epically, only to then go on to succeed so grandly, one concept that singularly stuck out to me was this idea about vulnerability and uncertainty and their role in the creative process. I began to understand that rather than being Negative qualities are ones we should try and avoid. They're actually an integral part of creating or doing. I understood this because I got to live it every day. People always ask, well, well, how do you know you can run across the country? And now they ask the same of my next adventure. But the point is not that I know I can do it, but that I don't know. There's no guidebook, because in order to do or create anything that's an honest-to-goodness game changer or to execute authentic change in ourselves or in our communities, we have to be willing to put ourselves in a place nobody's ever been before. And yeah, it's likely that from that place there will be times when we can't even see right around the corner. But that, that necessarily makes us vulnerable. And for whatever reason, rather than just accepting that, we're all guilty at one point or another of standing comfortably on the sidelines, just awaiting that right moment to jump up to that start. But that right moment, it's never coming. We'll never be invincible. We'll be in the grave before that happens. It's easy and it's lazy and it's unrewarding to allow vulnerability to become a deal breaker. Rather than trying to make the uncertain certain, let's instead get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Let's, let's sit down with vulnerability and uncertainty, get them a cup of coffee, get to know them a bit better because they'll be with us for the duration of our journey. Having fought this fact and finally accepted and lived it every day for four months, I finished that run a different person. And soon enough, my legs grew hungry for another adventure where I could recreate that feeling of challenge and discovery. So I went back to the drawing board and I came up with this plan to run the route of the Tour de France this summer, uh, which will involve running 2,000 miles over the course of nine weeks, staggering elevation change, I mean staggering, uh, enormous calorie consumption. And these stats, yeah, they're overwhelming, they're intimidating, but to me they're incredibly seductive. They're a worthy follow-up to the run across the U.S. And if those stats aren't enough to make me feel vulnerable already, there's also the fact that this is something that's never, ever been done before. And I'm actually giving this talk at that rare, perfect moment because I'm right in the middle of things. I haven't decisively succeeded yet, nor have I decisively failed, which is when we usually hear from most people. Instead, I'm right smack dab in the middle of training, right at that intersection of vulnerability and disciplined determination, which is where I think true innovation happens. These two images behind me represent that intersection. On your right is the elevation profile of the famously difficult Alpe de Huys stage of the Tour de France. Uh, I like it because it's got details, mile markers, distances, descents, ascents, so I can look at it and go, whoa, okay, I've got to get to the mountains to train, or I've got to get to the gym, onto a treadmill, crank that baby up to a 12% grade, and submit these legs into enjoying it. 
Opposite that is a snapshot of my training schedule. You can see at the top where I started at six miles a day and I will gradually work up to about 30 miles a day. I told you I had two major freak out moments on the US run. The second one didn't happen for a long time, not until my penultimate day, during which I literally cried from the moment I started running until the moment I fell asleep at night. And not because I was so happy to be finally reaching this goal of mine, but because I recognized that this dream I had been living so intensely, so personally every day for the last four months was coming to its end before I was ready for it. And I was again terrified at what uncertainties lie ahead. At complete opposite climaxes of that run, I endured my most vulnerable moments. Out of the first came this life-changing odyssey across the United States, and out of the second came the hunger to dream up another adventure and the drive to go do it. Vulnerability, people, is not shame, it's not regretful, it's not weakness, and we cannot allow it to become a roadblock because it's the very spot from which we dream our biggest dreams and go on to achieve our grandest goals. Thank you.